talk about what training is. Um, so when we talk about training, um, we're talking about communication, right? Dogs don't speak English or any other human language um, that we speak. Uh, they speak dog. So we have to find a way to communicate to them what we want and then also um, to motivate them so that it is worthwhile for them to do what we want. Um, so uh, there's a couple of ways that dogs learn. Um, so the way that we usually think about is that dogs learn by consequences, right? So we're used to thinking about, you know, if a dog uh, sits, then they get a cookie. Uh, if the dog um, is jumping up on the counter, we say no. Um, so we're used to thinking about training by consequences. The dog does something good, they get something good. The dog does something bad, something bad happens to them. Um, and for the most part, that tends to be very effective. Um, in class, we all use all reward-based training. And the reason for that is the other way that dogs learn is by emotional association, classical conditioning like Pavlov's bell. Um, that is always coming along with uh, learning operant conditioning, learning by consequences. Um, so for example, I'm sure you've seen this with your dog. Um, maybe if you just walk over to where you store the dog food or you pick up your dog's food bowl, they get all happy and excited, right? You see the tail wag, you see them look all sparkly and um, delighted. And it's not that they've learned to do anything. It's not that you've taught them to do something by consequence. They've just made this positive, happy association with the food bowl. Um, or, you know, with the leash, when you go and get the leash and they know it means a walk, they get all excited and happy. Or dogs also learn by negative emotional association too. So perhaps um, when you go and you put on your shoes and you get your coat and you get your keys in the morning um, and then you walk over to your dog's crate, they get all sad and mopey. Uh, because again, they have made this emotional association. My person um, gets their keys in their coat and, um, and that means they're leaving. So if you train with punishment, with aversives, you might be accidentally um, making the training problem worse. Uh, so for example, if you have a dog who is reactive to cars, meaning um, you're walking them, they see a car and they uh, growl and lunge and bark at the car. Um, often the way that people try to um, train that is to punish that by the dog is looking at the car, they're barking and lunging and pulling at the car, and, um, and you say no and you jerk on the leash. Um, if you do that, um, you may be making the problem worse because when a dog is barking and lunging and growling at something, it's usually because they already have a negative emotional association, right? They already, they're looking at that car or that person or that dog and they are not happy about it. Um, and then dogs are thinking about what they're looking at. So if they're looking at the car and then every time they see a car, what they're thinking is, I see a car and then my person yells at me and I have pain in my neck. Now I really hate cars. Um, so you're strengthening that negative association. Um, so that can be one of the pitfalls of training with punishment. Um, and in class, we are training our dogs to do good things. We want them to be eager to work for us. We want them to be eager to train for us. We want them to like to do what we want them to do so that they will do it right away um, and every time. So that's why we train with rewards because we want the dogs to really be motivated um, to do what we say. Smart training, C, mark, and reward. Um, so there's three pieces to that, and the first, and in some ways most important part, is to see it. Catch your dog being good. If you only get one thing from class, I hope that it is this, is to catch your dog in the act of being good. Notice when your dog has done the right thing. Often dogs' um, obnoxious behaviors are really attention getting, right? It's very easy to pay attention to your dog when they're jumping on you, when they're barking out the window, when they're stealing food off the counter. Um, and dogs sometimes learn to get our attention by being naughty uh, because that can be so effective. Um, but when they're being good, they're quietly lying in the corner, chewing on their bone. Uh, we just forget that they're there and we don't reward the good behavior. So that is the first most important thing, is notice your dog doing the right thing.
Reinforced behavior occurs more often, so you really want to reinforce the good behavior if you want it to keep happening. So that's the first part, is to see it, to notice it. The second part is to mark it. We want to let the dog know this is the communication. That, that's the right thing. I want you to keep doing that. Um, so in class, usually the way that we do that is with a clicker. Um, this is a clicker. It's just a little plastic box um, with a piece of metal in it. And when you press the, um, the top of it, it makes that clicking sound. So if you press the part that's the opposite end of where the tab and the coil is. So the click means three things. It means that was the right thing. Now you get a reward and the behavior is over. Now you can try again. So um, the first thing is that was the right thing. So if you're training your dog to sit, the clickable moment is when the dog's butt hits the floor. So if I say Buffy sit, and she sits, I'm gonna click when her butt hits the floor. And then the R and the C mark and reward is the reward is then I'm gonna give her a treat. If I'm training my dog to lay down and I'm saying uh, Buffy down and she sits and then she lays down, the clickable moment is when her elbows are on the floor. So you notice the dog doing the right thing, you mark it and then you give them a treat. Um, so uh, there are other ways um, to reward a dog. Um, in class, we're gonna use food um, because it's fast and easy and most dogs will work the most eagerly for food, so it tends to be the most efficient. Um, but if you have a dog who loves to play fetch at home, you could, for example, ask your dog to sit. When they sit, you click and then you throw the ball. Um, so you can use whatever the dog thinks is worth working for, but in class, if we did that, it would be chaos, um, so we use food. Um, if you don't like the clicker or your dog doesn't like the clicker, you don't have to use the clicker. I'm going to explain in a minute why um, the clicker is often what I like and, um, and recommend, um, but it's not the only way to train by any means. Um, so you can also use a short word. Um, a verbal marker like yep or yes, um, or you can do a mouth click. Um, as long as you can do it over and over and over again um, and it sounds the same every time, um, you can use that too. Um, so we use the clicker um, for a few reasons. One is that it's very precise. Um, you can click so much faster than you can say good dog, good girl, good boy, or even good. Um, so, and because dogs' behavior, especially when they're young and, and um, excitable, it happens very, very quickly. And you want to use the marker to mark the moment that the dog has done the right thing. So if I'm trying to train my dog to keep all their feet on the floor or to sit to greet, um, and I say, Buffy sit, and she sits, and as she's sitting, I start to say, good girl, but she sits and then she jumps up on me. By the time I've said, girl, she's already jumping up and then I'm rewarding um, jumping up. So, um, so that's one of the main things is that the click is very fast and precise. Another is um, that it sounds the same to the dog no matter the situation. Whether you're happy or stressed or excited or sad, the click is emotionally neutral. It always sounds the same. It sounds the same whether you or your partner or your child or your grandmother is doing the training. It sounds the same to everybody. So it tends to um, communicate more uh, effectively because the dog, it's cutting through the noise. You know, we talk to our dogs and around our dogs all day long. Dogs are not that good at processing human language sounds, um, but the click um, sounds unlike anything else. So it is processed very quickly and it tends to communicate very effectively to the dog. If you really don't want to use the clicker or if your dog is afraid of the clicker, um, you can use a short word like yip or yes um, instead and the dog will still learn and that usually is very effective in most cases too. Um, so, now we're going to um, practice doing some training in a minute. Um, in class, I uh, use positive reinforcement for dogs. I also believe in positive reinforcement for people. We learn very similarly to how dogs learn. Um, so I use something called tag teaching. Um, you might notice that at the end of each homework sheet, there is a tag point for the next class. 
For example, it might be the tag point is um, put your mat on the floor, or the tag point is wait at the door, um, or the tag point is um, say uh, with me or whatever. Um, so if I catch you in the act of being good, if I catch you doing one of those tag points, I am going to give you um, a tag that's just a little slip of paper that you write um, your dog's name and your name on, and then at the end of the class, I collect them, and when I'm running several classes at once, I collect them from everybody, and then I do a raffle. Um, and so you get something um, at that when I do the raffle, whoever's um, tag I pull. So it's like a lottery ticket. Now we're going to practice our training mechanics. Uh, dog training is a physical as well as a mental skill, so it really helps to do a little bit of practice before we start working with the dog, because uh, it gets much harder when we actually add the dog. Um, so what we're gonna practice now is um, the timing of the click and the treat. Um, so what you wanna do is take 10 treats, or you can use you know, dried beans or um, M&Ms or whatever you want to train this right now when you're not working with your dog. Um, so you take your 10 treats um, and you're going to practice doing the click and then the treat. If you uh, have somebody else that's coming to class with you, it's wonderful for the two of you to do this together as partners. If you don't have somebody to track practice it with it, you can just use a bowl or a cup like this. So one person is going to be the trainer and the other person is going to be the dog. And you're going to practice doing a click and then a treat. So you're clicking and then you're treating. So the click comes first and then the treat. You'll notice that I'm keeping my, my body, uh, my hands pretty quiet. So I'm clicking like this and then I'm treating. I am not doing that. The click is not a remote control. You can just keep it quietly by your side. You can put it uh, behind your back. Uh, so the click comes first and then the treat. You'll also notice that I have my treat hand pretty quietly by my side. Um, if you keep your hand in your treat pouch and you're rummaging around in the treat pouch like this, your dog is just gonna be looking at the hand in the treat pouch, right? Um, you know, if you're rummaging around, they're just gonna be watching that. If you're holding them in your hand, in front of their nose like this, they're just gonna be looking at the treats. So practice keeping your treat hand quiet, click, and then reach for the treat, and treat. Click, and then treat. So that's the first exercise. Go ahead and pause the tape and practice that, and then I'll show you the next one. Okay, so the next thing is to help you remember that the click comes first and then the treat. Often we get in the habit of we're so anxious to get the treat to the dog right away that we treat, we treat and then click, or we click and treat at the same time, um, and then the dog is not really getting the helpful information of the click marking the right moment of the behavior followed by the treat. So what you're gonna practice now is inserting a beat. Um, again, this is really helpful and wonderful to do with a practice or training partner. Um, so one person is holding the dish um, and inserting the beat, and the other person is doing the click and the treat. So what it looks like is click, the other person says beat, and then treat. If you click and you're handing the treat before, while they're saying beat, then you know that you didn't pause. So it's click, beat, treat. So you reach for the food after they've said beat. So it's click, beat, treat, okay? So one person is just standing there holding the dish and saying beat after the click, and the other person is doing the clicking and the treating. So do that 10 times and then you're gonna swap over, each person get a, a chance to do it, and then come back and watch the rest of the video again. Right. So I hope you had fun with that. Um, and then the next thing uh, is that you want to actually train your dog, what does the click mean? Um, so that's the most important piece of your homework before you get to class, is to teach your dog that the click means 
that was the right thing and now you get something good. So that's called conditioning your dog to the clicker. You only have to do it once in your dog's life and then they know it for the rest of their lives. Just like we know that little slips of green paper um, mean you can cash those things in for rent and food and entertainment and other great things. You never have to learn again what money means even though it's intrinsically worthless. Um, the same is true for the click. Once your dog learns that the click means good things, uh, you never have to train it again. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now with my dog Barnum. You're going to take your clicker, you're gonna muffle it in your hand, so put your fist around it, and then stick it in your back pocket so it's not too loud. This is just while you're getting your dog used to it to make sure they're not nervous of it. Then you're gonna click and then hand them a treat. Click and then treat. If they're doing well with that and they don't seem nervous of it, you can keep it behind your back in your closed fist, but take it out of your pocket, click, it's a little louder now, and then treat, click, and then treat. If that's going well, then you can just hold it by your side. You're gonna click, and you don't have to hand it to them. You can also toss it to them. So as long as the click comes first, and then the treat. Do that several times. It's a great thing to do while your dog is looking up at you so they're learning to pay good attention to you like Barnum is doing here. I'll see if I can uh, show you what it looks like from your side of things. So when he looks, looks up at me, that's a great time to click. You're training your dog to pay attention to you. There's nothing better than that, right? So when they look up, you click and then treat. You never want to click when your dog is doing something bad. You don't want to click when they're running away from you and click so that they'll come to get a treat because the click means that was the right thing. In that case, you're training your dog to run away from you. So you want to start right away. You can see Barnum is giving me lovely eye contact. So that's a great time to click and then treat. When you want to know, does my dog know what the click means? Wait for them to look away for a second. If you click and they startle and look up at you like, ooh, where's my treat? Then you know that they've learned it. And that's it, you never have to do that part again. They know what the clicker means now um, and you're ready to move on to training. Now we're gonna talk about how to enter the training space with your dog. Uh, this is often one of the most difficult parts of class for the dogs and the people because the dogs are really excited. Um, to get to the training space and they're not always paying very good attention. Um, so uh, I have some recommendations for that. So for one thing, um, when you get to the, the door for the, for the class, the classroom door, you want to pause and wait at the door. It's really important as you're making your way into class um, in the training space or elsewhere, um, if there is a dog in person ahead of you, a handler team ahead of you, please hang back, give them several feet um, so that you're waiting until they've moved in before you move up. So wait at the door to make sure there's nobody in front of you. And then there's a wait station. Uh, the second entrance to the classroom, you'll see a sign that says wait. You're gonna wait there with your dog um, until uh, the trainer or the assistant come over and show you to your, to your spot. Um, so how are you gonna get your dog to wait? They don't know their wait cue yet. We're gonna teach that in class. Um, so one thing that you can do is to take a big handful of treats like this, lots and lots of treats, um, and you make a fist like this, but the opening of your hand has the treats sticking out. So you can think of your hand as like a con. Um, and you're gonna hold that to your dog's nose and they can nibble, nibble, nibble. They're gonna chew some of the treats out and you're gonna hold that to their nose as you walk into the classroom. So as they're getting the food out of your hand, that gives them something to do, and that way they're not pulling toward all the other people and dogs. So that's one good thing. The con hand is one helpful way to do it. Another way that works better for some dogs is what I call the trail of breadcrumbs. Um, so that is also, you take a big handful of treats, um, and then you hold them to your dog's nose, and you say, find it and you just draw a trail of treats as you walk in. So again, it gives your dog something to do other than pulling um, toward other dogs. So that can be very helpful too. Um, so remember to wait until uh, the other dogs and 
handlers um, have made their way into the classroom and then you wait and, um, and come in and, and get set up too. There's a training game that we play at the beginning of every class as everybody is coming in and getting settled. And then also we do it between exercises during class. It's called the good dog game. I'm going to show you how to do it now. Uh, it will eventually be an excellently useful trained behavior of training your dog to go and lie on a mat. Uh, it's such a useful behavior. There's so many bad things a dog can't do when they're lying on a mat. If they're focusing on lying on their mat. They're not stealing food off the counter. They're not jumping on guests. Um, they're not barking out the window. So it's a terrific skill to train your dog to lie quietly on their mat. Um, but the good dog game first just focuses on rewarding your dog for offering good behavior. Uh, we want our dogs to learn to um, offer good behavior so that we don't have to be telling them every minute, do this, do that. They just learn to do good things and that good things get rewarded. Um, and that's a terrific thing to do when you first get into class. We use a very high rate of reinforcement with this game, which means rapid, lots and lots of clicks and treats. Um, so you'll see how high the rate of reinforcement is. That's because the higher the rate of reinforcement, the faster the dog learns, the more information you're giving them. And that's particularly helpful because the first class, and especially, but all classes when dogs first come in and other dogs and people are coming in, it's the hardest time for the dogs. They're the most distracted. And this is a great way to train your dog to pay attention and be good, even in distracting environments. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in you're gonna tether your dog um, to their tether if there's a tether point available. Um, and then you're gonna put down um, your towel that you get from me. You're gonna bring that to every class and you can train on this at home too. Um, and then you're gonna reward, click and treat your dog for doing anything that's good. So I'll show you that now with Barnum Release. So I'm gonna put the towel on the floor. I'm clicking because he is being quiet and he's stepping on the mat. Those are both good things. So I'm clicking again and placing the treat on the mat, clicking and placing the treat on the mat. I'm just going to move them out of the way so you can see. Um, so anytime that the dog steps on the mat is a good time to click and place the treat there. Right? Um, so he's um, looking up at me. I like that. I'm going to click and treat that. Um, if your dog tends to bark, you could just click and treat them for being quiet. That's a wonderful thing to do. Um, so I'm doing lots and lots of clicking and treating. I would be doing it faster if I wasn't talking to you too. Eventually, um, well, he knows this game, so he's offering a down. Um, eventually, most dogs, if you do this over and over again, um, will sit. Um, and that's a wonderful thing to click them for. You can click them for sitting. You can click them if they offer a down for lying down. You can see that I'm just clicking and placing the treats between his front paws. Um, if you do that over and over again, once your dog starts offering the down, then they'll just stay down there. They don't even have to move. They'll just think this mat just magically grows treats out of it. I'm just going to stay here. Okay. Your dog is not going to do this. Barnum has been doing this game for years. He knows what the mat means. Um, so click your dog for putting one paw on, two paws on, looking at you, um, looking away from other dogs, be quiet. Um, sitting, anything that's good, you can click and treat your dog for. This is the good dog game. You notice I'm not telling Barnum to do anything. He's offering good behavior. So I'm going to show you this one more time. Release. I'm going to move him away. I didn't find it. So you put down the mat and then you're ready with your thumb on the clicker. Your dog steps on it. Click and treat, put the treat on the mat. He's being quiet. I'm rewarding that. Um, he's standing on the mat. I like that, so I can reward that. He's looking up at me. I'm going to reward that. If the dog eventually offers a sit, um, you can reward that. Um, because he's done this before, he's offering the down, and then you can just click and treat. And then, you know, once the dog gets good at it, you don't even have to click anymore. You can just periodically put a treat between their paws in later classes. In the first few classes, for sure, the first course or two that you take, um, you're gonna wanna do this. But when you get to more advanced level courses, intermediate or canine good citizen or some of the other advanced classes, 
By then, you can just put the towel on the floor and the dog will lay down on it and you can just periodically um, give them a treat. Are you ready to start training your dog? Okay, so now you know how to come to class, you know what to do in class, you can start training your dog at home with some of the things that you've learned already today. Now that you know how to see, mark, and reward, you can practice it with your dog at home. You've conditioned your dog to the clicker so they know what it means. So you can try that out. If your dog already knows how to sit or do some other simple behaviors, you can start practicing your click and treat with your dog. So I'll show you that now with Barnum. So one of the things we'll do in class is to show the dog how to touch their nose to your hand with the cute touch. So I click the moment that his nose hit my hand and now I'm gonna reward him. So for example, if your dog knows how to sit, Barnum sit, when he sits, oops, he's out of the picture, and his butt is on the floor, I click, let me see if I can do this so you can see Barnum sit. I'm gonna click when his butt is on the floor and then give him his treat. If your dog knows how to lay down, burn him down. You click when they're on the floor and then give the treat. So practice your timing with that. If you really want to start training your dog to pay attention to you, keep your clicker uh, on its wrist coil on your arm or keep it in your pocket, have some good treats in your pocket and just start clicking anytime that your dog looks at you around the house, in the yard, don't say anything. Just wait until their nose swings in your direction, click, and then give them a treat. If you do that often enough, your dog, your dog is gonna start paying a lot more attention to you, and it's a really helpful thing to do in class. Um, so start this at home. Remember that you give the dog the cue, Barnum sit. Once their butt is on the floor, you click, and then you give them their treat. Barnum down. When the elbows are on the floor, I click and then I give the treat. So start training at home if you want to. You can never get too much good behavior from your dog. Remember that the more you reinforce behavior, the more often it occurs. Uh, remember to find your homework in the client portal and get in touch if you have any questions. I'm really looking forward to meeting you and your dog in class.